Hi, this is your math professor, Barbara Rademacher, and we are heading into part three of the orientation. How to pass with an A, B, or C. First and foremost, register in my math lab. Type in your course ID from your syllabus. This is not a real course ID. You want to do one module of work every week. Use a TI-83 or TI-84 graphing calculator. Do the homework on my math lab. Watch the videos and PowerPoints on my math lab or in Blackboard or on YouTube or on iTunes. Your videos are in all of those places. Listen to the class podcast, the audio podcast that I record uh, in my uh, on-campus courses. Take the module exams. On-campus classes take exams in class. Online classes take exams in the NWAC testing center and you have to make an appointment. You must take the final exam in order to pass the class. Even if you have a good grade, you have to take the final exam. That's a math department rule. And always pay attention to the weekly due dates. Now here is my contact information. Notice I've blacked, I've blocked out my cell phone number. You have it in your written um, syllabi, which are on uh, Blackboard and in my math lab, and they'll be on the ones that I give you if you're in my on-campus on classes. Uh, but this is on the internet, so I don't want to put my personal telephone number there. This is my work number and a personal link to my uh, web page, um, all about where my office is, SC 326 on the third floor of the Student Center on the main campus in Bentonville, Arkansas. My office hours are on the office hour page of your syllabus. Uh, here I have uh, how to get in touch with, your with the math secretary, the math department secretary, who is in SC 351, which happens to be right across from my office. Her name is Jill Witt. And her telephone number is 479-986-6900. Oh, and by the way, my office telephone number is 479-986-6900. Two, six. Now, you can also contact the division secretary. Her name is Heidi Migliori. Her telephone number is 479-619-4142. And I have her email address there as well. We have a mathematics advisor named Melissa Smith. Her email address is msmith, that is, M-S-M-I-T-H at N-W-A-C-C dot E-D-U. Now, at the top of this page, you see a blue box. Okay, uh, what this box normally shows, normally it's a kind of a red box, and if you look in your syllabus, you'll see that that tells you exactly how the grades for your class are calculated, how much percent everything costs. This can change. On-campus classes and online classes have different numbers of exams. So you'll have to look at your personal uh, syllabus to see how you're going to be graded. But one thing is the same for all my classes, and that is that attendance is calculated based on your participation in my math lab. And we're about to talk about something very, very important. It's possible to make a grade worse than an F. That grade is called an FP. Now, here's the news flash. The news flash is that the policy regarding FAs has changed. There is no more FA. It's now called an FP. With the FP, you must do at least 50% of the semester work in order to avoid losing your financial aid. In this class, you must earn a 70% 
on half the homework assignments and pass one module exam if all you want is an F rather than an FP. Of course, you want to go on for an A. But I'm going to read you the text of this statement from the school. As of the first day of fall semester 2013, the FA has been replaced by the FP, which means failure because of non-participation. The FP will not be based on attendance, like the FA was, but instead it will be based on the completion of class requirements. In all NWAC classes, students must complete 50% of assigned work in order to avoid being given a grade of FP and possibly losing their fina financial aid. In this mathematics class, 50% of assigned work is defined as 50% of the weekly homework assignments with a grade of at least 70% plus a passing grade on one module exam. That will get you an F rather than an FP. If you want to pass the class, you have to go on and earn at least a 70% in the entire class. Now, here's an important note. It is now possible, if you're in an on-campus class, it's now possible to attend every single class and still make an FP because you have not done the work in my math lab. So be very careful to make sure you're working in my math lab. Here's my math lab. My math lab is located at this web address. This is where all your work will be. It is absolutely, totally, positively required. You must be signed into my math lab, which means you must purchase an access code online at this web address or at the NWAC bookstore or at some other bookstores like the campus bookstore, which is located not far from the main campus of the school. Okay, and the uh, first part of the orientation told you exactly how to get registered in my math lab. All of your work and grades will be shown here. Even the grades on the paper exams will be recorded here. If you're not in my math lab, you will have no grade and you will receive an FP, which will probably eliminate your financial aid. This is very important, especially for people receiving financial aid from the VA, from single parent scholarship, and from workforce development. You can purchase the access code at this web address, and of course you've already got the class ID code. That also uh, is in your syllabus. Okay, once you're in my math lab, your menu is on the left. When you click on homework, you get to homework, you see your homework, and your media exams. What the media exams include is Khan Academy videos and other videos and PowerPoints produced by the publisher of your textbook. When you click on homework, you get to a typical homework problem that includes videos of how to work types of homework made by me and the actual homework problems which are over here. Again, um, earlier parts, part one and two, especially part two of the orientation, dealt with how you do the homework in my math lab. Now what about Blackboard? Blackboard, you'll have Blackboard for every class, and how you get to Blackboard is to go through my NWAC, which is also where you get your email for the school. Once you're in my NWAC, you can get to Blackboard in one of two ways. You can click on the word Blackboard over here on the left and go immediately to, to your Blackboard class, or you can click here at my courses and then go to this page and then click on the icon right here. That will take you to your Blackboard page. When you're in your Blackboard page, you'll see the menu on the left. 
and you can read the announcements, you can read your syllabus, um, you can read a number of different things. You can get calculator instructions, you can get free graph paper, you can also get um, a, a free graphing calculator actually. A TI-84 Plus, you need to check it out. Excuse me. Um, click on weekly activities and you'll go to this board. There will be one for every week, all 15 weeks of the semester. What to do every week of the semester. And say you decide to click on week two, you would go to this page which actually has your work for the semester. It tells you what the required work in my math lab is. It has the class lectures in uh, three formats, flash video, MP4 video, and those are the videos that uh, connect to YouTube and also iTunes U. And then there, there is an audio podcast of what I say in class. Um, you'll have class handouts. And when students uh, email me asking how to do a particular kind of math problem, I answer them by making a short video or writing it out on paper and scanning the paper and putting it right here. Okay, let's talk about some of the important rules. There's FERPA, which means the Family Educational Rights and Privacy Act. If you want to know all about FERPA, please go to FERPA.gov. This is a federal and a state law that protects your identity and what this means for our relationship, our teacher-student relationship, is that I cannot talk to you about your grades on the telephone because I can't be completely certain I'm talking to you. So we have to communicate about your grade with only with the NWAC email, okay? Your official NWAC email is the only way I can discuss questions about your grade with you. The entire school wants to welcome veterans, welcome them home, welcome them to school. We have a Veterans Resource Center with which you are also uh, familiar if you're a veteran because that's how you get your uh, VA, student aid. Uh, we also have a veteran student organization. You should be sure to join that. We have a, a special veterans lounge. Uh, down on the first floor um, and uh, my students who are veterans say that they like that lounge very much. This is new, the excessive class cancellation policy due to weather. I have to read you the entire thing. At times, excessive snow days or other unexpected events may result in class cancellations up to or more than a week. Be advised that these missed classes are not vacation days. All students will be expected to continue their assignments. You will be contacted via your established class communications channels with instructions. Online classes will continue to operate according to schedule. Exceptions and allowances may be made for exceptional circumstances. Now, the rest of this is in italics. That's because they're the instructions given to your instructors and professors. In other words, this is what I have to do, and I want you to know what I was told to do by the administration. All faculty must have a plan for continuing the learning experience after excessive class cancellation. Excessive class cancellation is equivalent to missing a week's worth of classes in a 15-week semester. Of course, this should be done for any class cancellation, not just excessive cancellation. It is recommended that you use Blackboard or My Math Lab to make assignments or assessment to replace the lost class time. Posting worksheets, reading assignments, or other at-home learning activities is acceptable. All faculty must be able to continue the learning process even if the campus is closed. So you can see that you'll be expected to continue with your learning, continue with your My Math Lab assignments, whether or not we're meeting on campus. 
the Disabilities Resource Center. The primary mission of the Disabilities Resource Center is to ensure equal access to educational opportunities for students with disabilities at NWAC. And here we have their number 479-986-4076 or their email address, which is disability at nwac.edu. In 2008, the term disability was redefined so that now, <coughs> excuse me, so that now, um, uh, uh, if you have a disability that's taken care of by medication, that also is counted under disabilities. In other words, if you take meds for your disability so that it doesn't bother you anymore, you can still be counted as having a disability in the Disability Resource Center. So if you can answer yes to any of these questions, you really need to consider going by the Disabilities Resource Center in order to receive an official accommodation. Do you have trouble remembering? Do you suffer from frequent headaches? Do you have problems with depression, anxiety, or similar issues? Do you have difficulty reading? Do you have difficulty hearing or seeing? Do you suffer from chronic pain? All right, the Disabilities Resource Center is located in SC 114, which is on the first floor of the Student Center at the main Bentonville campus. And this is important for you to know. By law, your disability status is kept confidential. Anybody can get a disability. If you're a troop, if you're a, uh, a biker, or just somebody who likes to ride a motorcycle, if you play sports, or if you're even a nice lady sitting at a desk, something unexpected can happen to you, and you can develop difficulty learning. But most people with disabilities never ever go to the Disability Resource Center, which means that a lot of the people in my classes, maybe most of the people in my classes have learning disabilities and they just don't let anyone know. Well, I expect that every person in my class, including me, has a disability of one sort or another. A respected specialist once said, if you don't have a disability right now, just wait, it'll happen. I teach my classes as though every student has a cognitive, psychological, or physical disability. A cognitive disability means you have difficulty thinking. A psychological disability means that you have an emotional state that gets in the way of your learning. A physical disability is like a traumatic brain injury, a back injury, or an amputation, or chronic headaches, um, and those definitely get in the way of your learning. You will discover that I create my own audiovisual materials, and I make professional videos like Khan Academy available to use to help you learn math. I post all class lectures, all class lecture notes and handouts on Blackboard, I also set aside 10 hours per week just to meet with my students. If for some reason you cannot come to my office hours, we can probably make an appointment at some other time. Also, we have three large tutoring facilities, free tutoring facilities on the NWAC campus. Whether or not you have a diagnosed disability and whether or not you use the Disabilities Resource Center, I want you to know, uh, I want to know, okay? I want to know what I can do to help you learn algebra. So please feel free to share with me openly during the semester. Remember, it's the computer that grades you and I'm there as your helper. Okay. Our classes are part of developmental education, which means we're trying to get you ready for college algebra or for other college level courses like AAS math. Through placement and advisement, developmental educational courses may be required prior to taking college level courses. The program goal of developmental math 
is to enable learners to acquire competencies for success in mainstream college classes, courses, and to attain career and life goals. That's my goal for you, and it's the goal of the other developmental faculty. So where can you get tutoring? Where can you get help? Well, there are my office hours. There's the Math Center. There's the Math Cafe, the Academic Success Center. All of them are located right on the main Bentonville campus. And every homework problem has helper buttons, which you would have seen uh, in Orientation Part 2. It is so easy to contact me. I am all over the web, okay? This is my YouTube page where all of your videos are stored. Also, all of your videos are stored on iTunes in the Arkansas iTunes U area of iTunes. All right, so beginning algebra class videos are all stored here. Here's the web address. Intermediate algebra videos are all stored here. Uh, and here is the web address. Also, you can find me on Facebook at the NWACC Facebook app. I hang out in the Algebra Forum. I have my own Facebook account and I have a Facebook page just for beginning algebra students. I have a Facebook page just for intermediate algebra students. And you can find me on LinkedIn. Admittedly, this, this uh, uh, picture is about five years old, and I need to update it to my current picture. Yes, that's true. OK. All right. <laughs>